Some people say you're only as good as your last performance. And what I say is we're only as good as our next performance. My mom's a dancer and first brought me to her rehearsals when I was six years old. And I still remember it was a Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky and I was just completely blown away by its beauty. I was so moved. After that, I start um, learning the piano. I remember thinking, well, this is common sense. This is very easy. <laughs> and then I got into the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, and it's really hard to get in. I learned all these monstrous, most difficult, challenging pieces, all the things I didn't dare to play because it requires much more thought and intellect. It's not about practicing anymore, it's about learning the, the thought process of the composer. What is the composer's intention? What is he trying to express? Composers spend hours and hours writing those pieces, so it's only right for us to spend years to really decipher the meaning of the piece. I think each stage has a different challenge. The Hammer Clavier I learned when I was 29. I think it's the most painful and most soul-searching music. Beethoven wrote all his life stories in there, I think. The soul of the composer is embedded in the music. It's 50 minutes to grab people's attention, to keep my own concentration. Every movement is technically and emotionally charged, but the hardest part he kept until the last 15 minutes. We call that the Mount Everest. I had climbed that last year. I think the harder something is for you to get, in the end, it's more satisfaction to get it. My new plan is to play conduct with two gorgeous chamber orchestras. And that's what's fun about being a pianist. There's just endless possibilities to explore, and you never know where it leads you. We have to get inspired, get motivated, and just be alive. There are ideas and inspirations out there for us to catch them.